The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. When the hour had come for him to pass from this world to the Father, Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world. And I am coming to you, Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost, except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world, so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I've given them your word, and the word world has hated them because they do not belong to the world just as I do not belong to the world. I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world, and for their sakes, I sanctify myself so that they also may be sanctified in the truth. The Gospel of our risen Lord. Today's readings exemplify right relationships right relationships with God, with oneself, and with others, especially for those who are in leadership positions in the church or exercise ministry. Today's, today's gospel also helps prepare us for the Feast of Pentecost this coming weekend. Today's gospel passage is taken from the second part of the High Priestly Prayer of Jesus where he prays for his apostles. I think it's interesting to note, what is it that Jesus prays for? Jesus asks the Father to give his disciples five things, perseverance, unity, protection, joy, and holiness. First, Jesus prays for their per perseverance in the teaching he has given them and the communion they have with him. Then he prays for unity amongst his apostles as a reflection of the unity of the three divine persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Next, Jesus prays that the Father may guard and protect them just as he himself had protected them while he was still with them. Fourth, Jesus prays that they may share his joy in this life and for all eternity, the result of their union with God and their perseverance. Finally, Jesus prays for those who, though living in the world, are not of the world, that they be truly holy and carry out the mission he has entrusted to them, just as he did the work his Father gave him to do. I think it's very significant that Jesus concludes his prayer by asking for holiness for his disciples. As persons consecrated to God and made holy, they need to have moral sanctity and the constant practice of moral virtues. Bishops as the successors of the apostles and priests as helpers of the bishops, in turn, need the supporting prayer of the faithful entrusted to their care so that they may lead holy lives, witnessing to the love, the mercy, the compassion, and the forgiveness of Christ in their ministry. And in today's first reading from the Acts of the Apostles, we see St. Paul's farewell speech. 
his exhortation to the leadership that he gathered around him as he was getting ready to leave Ephesus for good. He, in turn, stresses a few points. He urges them, first of all, to watch over themselves. They have to leave, into, live integrated lives. They have to live the gospel if, in turn, they are to lead others. And then, and only then, they are entrusted and asked to watch over the flock which the Holy Spirit has given them to shepherd. As St. Paul says, the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to shepherd the church of God that he obtained with the blood of his own son. St. Paul then goes on to warn that there will be disruptions, there will be conflicts, there will be problems, and he says, some even from your own group will come, distorting the truth in order to entice the disciples to follow them, and he urges them to be on their guard, and that is a good warning for today's church. We are urged to be alert, to be transparent, to be honest, to be open, and pursue justice. Jesus declares that the disciples are to do all these things because they have the advantage of the word that he has given them. They have heard the word made flesh instructing them on the things that are from above. Knowledge of this truth has been awakened in their hearts. Jesus asked the Father to consecrate them in the truth while he is removed from their sight. Jesus does not ask the Father to take the disciples out of this world. They must remain in the world to transform it by their preaching of the gospel. But they no longer belong to the world any more than Jesus does. This spiritual advantage they enjoy will eventually be shared with others after Pentecost. We now hold up to our loving God some of the prayers and intentions we'd like to offer during this Mass. Mindful that we are to rely on God rather than on the world, for what is important, let us ask God to provide for those that, things we need. For the leaders of the church, may their words and actions continue to help people come to know the truth of God's saving love for them. For this, we pray to the Lord. We pray for the world, that it learns peace and justice, and that all people of this earth may sing God's praises. For this, we pray to the Lord. For those who are burdened with economic woes, May they be heartened by God's promise to be with us always. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For all the parishes across this land, that together we may always seek the truth and strive to live as Jesus taught us. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For those who have died, may they behold the Lord in all his glory in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord and we take a moment to formulate in the privacy of our own hearts and minds other prayers that we'd like to remember in today's Eucharist. For these and for the intentions of the parishioners of St. Justin, Dustin's Parish, we pray to the Lord. God our Father, please hear these petitions of ours and grant what is in your will for us. And we ask this in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ.